Hey everyone, welcome to Mrs. LaCourse's art class. Today we're going to be making peacocks out of watercolor. What you will need is a tray of watercolor, um, a piece of paper or two, depending on what you have for materials, a straw, and a cup of water. So um, I don't have colored construction paper. We are going to, art teacher doesn't have all the supplies in the world. Um, so what I do have is an extra piece of white paper and some uh, markers, or you can use crayons um, so that you can color the paper the color that you want after to add little details. So here we go. If you don't have a straw, no worries. You can use your breath. I'll just show you each time, um, each, each way how to do this. So what are the colors of a peacock? If you said blue and green, you're right. Um, there also can be purple found in it, um, just some really, really deep um, shades of blue that really appear to be purple, but they're not quite purple. So we're going to be using those three colors. So what I want you to do to start is you're going to fill those um, well, if I didn't say you need a brush, you need a brush too. Um, fill those parts of your palette, the blue, the green, and the purple with water, so you want it to be nice and wet. All right, so it doesn't matter what color you start with. Um, I'm gonna start with blue, so I'm gonna swish the, my brush around in the blue and I'm gonna drop a couple of dots in one spot. You see how I did that? Okay, then I'm gonna take my straw, I'm gonna not touch the paint with it, but I'm gonna put it very close to the paint, near the paper, not on the paper, I'm going to take a big breath and I'm going to blow through the straw and push the paper diagonally, which is towards the back corner, um, through my straw. You see how that spread? Look how cool that is. Almost looks like a fish. See, there's the, the head of the fish and these are that's the tail. I have a very good imagination. I am an art teacher. <laughs> So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep doing that. You're gonna add a couple more spots. Make sure you have really wet palette and just keep going. And then switch maybe, once you've got a little bit of blue on there, switch to some green. And you can do a couple spots at a time if you want to, it's totally up to you. And try to blow it across the colors that are already there so the colors kind of blend together a little bit. Um, yeah, so if you don't have a straw, you can just use your breath just close down to the paper. It doesn't work as well as a straw, but you can still make it work. If you also have a piece of paper, you can roll up a piece of paper really tight and probably blow through that too. That would work. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit more blue because I let my blue. I want my peacock to be more blue than it is green. That's just my personal preference. See, I did a couple of spots there. And we're going to keep going till the majority of the side is not filled filled, but you know, it's more colored space than it is um than it is white. So you might just change your direction of how you're blowing so it's not all going in the very, very same direction, even though that's where we want it to kind of end up is towards the back corner. But if you like make it blown this way a little bit more rather than straight across, you can do that too. I'm almost done. I think I want a little bit more green than a little bit more blue, and then I'll show you what I have. I wish I could see the other way around and see what you guys got have going on. I'm just gonna add a little more blue. All right. So this is what I have so far. Pretty cool, huh? I think it looks beautiful. All right, so now we're going to be painting an oval and a circle. So what's the difference between an oval and a circle? An oval, I'll draw it out for you. I'm going to use this paper for a couple of things anyway. So an oval, or a circle, we'll start with a circle. A circle is 
is like this. It's equal space around the whole thing. Now to do an oval, all you have to do is stretch the circle a little bit. So what we do is make it a little longer with rounded edges. Do you see the difference? So this one's the circle and this one's the oval. So we're going to paint that. If you are more comfortable um, painting in the space first, I mean drawing and then painting the space in, you can do that or you can just go right, right ahead with it and, um, and paint it in using your brush. I'm going to draw mine in. So that's going to be my shape like that. Okay, I have a circle and I have an oval. So we're going to take our blue, we're going to paint in, trying to stay in the lines. See how I'm staying in the lines? What I like to do is I like to go around the edges first and then fill in the middle. And then when you're painting, you want to make sure, with watercolor, you want to make sure that your brush is nice and wet all the time. It's what I call a happy brush, is when all the bristles, which is the hair, all the bristles come to a nice point like this. If it starts to go all over the place and it looks like you just um, rubbed your hair underneath a fleece blanket and so it's sticking up everywhere, that's what I think about for an angry brush. So we don't want an angry brush. We want our bristles to all stay in the same direction. And then pull towards yourself. Now I have a shorter brush and it's easier for me to hold it kind of midway, so midway is half, halfway down. For you, because you're learning, you might want to hold it on the silver or the gold part depending on what your brush has. So you're going to hold it nice and close to the hairs and then you're going to pull it down towards you, painting in one direction, like kind of like you're combing your hair. So if you comb your hair the opposite way, it's not very comfortable, right? So our brushes like to be... Um, with the hair going the same direction. Now, if you have some extra space here and you don't like that extra space there, you can add a couple more dots and then fill that space in and just kind of blow that around. Just to fill it in a little bit. All right, so the next step, this is going to need to be dried because you will need um, to glue, and glue becomes um, ungluable. It, it unattaches itself, it's water-based. Um, so when you add water to it, or if something's wet, it's not gonna stick. So here's a hair dryer, just blast it real quick. Only the peacock needs really to be dried. The rest can wait. All right, so mine's actually pretty dry already. It's not completely dry, but I don't want this to be a 10, uh, 10 minute video of me um, just doing that part, so here we go. The next part, it's almost a 10 minute video as it is, so um, the next part, we're gonna be making the eyes and the nose, or the beak, I should say, and some feet. So, remember how I said if you don't have construction paper, um, you can use regular paper, regular white paper. Um, so you can either draw out a triangle for the nose. So a triangle has three sides and three points like this. Or you can draw a space like that and then draw your triangle on the inside. But if you want to practice staying in the lines, which I always ask my students to do is to practice staying in the lines, then I want you to draw your triangle first and then cut it out. And that's only if you are coloring this in and if you don't have construction paper. If you have construction paper, then you're still gonna draw the shape, but you don't have to color it in. All right, so we've got that. I forgot to mention that you will need some glue, so if you didn't grab some glue, get some glue and again this is the only glue I have in the house so even if, even though I don't like glue sticks this is what we're going with so there's my beak now it's okay if you have a little extra that kind of fell off to the side I'm gonna end up making that into a wing I think just because I 
Um, I want, I work so hard, I don't want this to be just a blob of nothing. You can always fix a mistake. You can always change something. It's art. And art is very um, workable. All right. So now we're going to do some eyes. So what shapes are eyes? They're circles. So if you don't know how to cut out a circle, you can cut it. Uh, you can have mom and dad help you. If you want to draw it and then have mom and dad help you cut it, that's fine. Uh, if you want two equal eyes, fold your paper in half. And you'll just cut once and you'll have two equal pieces. So you're going to glue those guys down and then you can draw the eyeballs on them afterwards. Oof, mine has big eyeballs. My paper, I guess, must be a little too wet still, but that's all right. There we go. Now it's sticking down. And then you can color in your eyeballs. Like that. And then what we can do is we can give it a hairdo. All right, guys. So the last part of our project is to draw in the hair. Can you guys see the hair there? So all you do is, whoops, all you do is give it some little tufts here like this and then come up, curl around and stop. And you can add as many or as little as you want. They don't even have to have curls on it. Um, if you made a mistake like my wing, you can see here that I just outlined the wing and then I drew um, little bumps or continuous M's going across, which you don't even have to do that. You can just outline it. And then I added some feet. And to do the feet, I took a orange marker and I started with this one and then I started my next one at the end where it meets the body. And I do the last one. So I'm doing that to all three toes on both, like that. And then we've got our finished project. I hope you guys enjoyed your art class. Um, I really wish I could see your product so that we can, you know, share. Uh, I really like to watch what my students do. So it'd be really cool to see yours. So if you want to share and post, that'd be awesome. Take care. Be well. Hope you had fun. Bye.